Hello, I'm going to show you what I think I'm going to title this video, My Little Helpers. And uh, I'm going to show you things that are aids at the bench, or bench aids, especially for hand tool woodworking, but you might find applications for power tools somewhere in here. But uh, I talk about a lot about hand tool woodworking, so these are some aids that I um, use um, if I'm not working with power tools um, once in a while one of my aids is a bottle of beer um, doesn't go real good with guns and power tools so you want to keep that in mind but otherwise uh, I think it was Ben Franklin that said beer is proof that God loves us and wants us to be happy so uh, sometimes you'll see a bottle of beer out, but um, do so at your own risk, especially with power tools and sharp <laughs> and sharp chisels. Aids that I use at the bench, um, you'll see in another video. This is a device to clamp in the uh, tail vise. Shove a piece of wood in it, it has a wedge that I, I just keep it clamped together so I don't lose it. There's probably a better way, but I have a million of these clamps, so I, I just keep it to get together and it's in the clutter underneath that I talk about all the time in the video, one of my big uh, first videos. What is all that clutter there and why do I think I need it? Well, this, this is the kind of stuff sometimes. And this is a holding device, put wood into it, drive the wedge in and I can plane. So you've seen that maybe if you've seen some other videos. You should see your, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I haven't yet, but I'm going to uh, upload a video about the use of a shooting board in a miter box. So I'll grab that miter box. I talk at great length about a simple little homemade mitering block it's not really a box. Some of them are, but this I don't make them that way. I talk a great deal about it. And this is a glorified bench hook. You can clamp it if you want to clamp it in the vise. All the pressure's that way, so it works well as a bench hook. But you can clamp it if you want. So I'll not talk about these because there's so much in another video already about it. I will say this, that... I have, and I didn't say this in the other video, but I have a much larger miter, mitering block. You know, I call it miter box because that's the historical term. But I have a much larger mitering block, and it has a little bench hook rail on the bottom that I can hook with. And clamp it in either vise. Now this won't move and if I was using a pull saw it will work and I can do much larger moldings. I can do a fairly sizable crown mold in this and just cut away. It just cuts great. There's enough of a friction fit that this has no slop in it and uh, I talk at length about that in my other mitering video. Pull saw would just go the opposite way. That's where I'd probably put it in the tail vise. And then you're cutting on the push stroke. And again, this saw worked great. The only thing about this miter box, it wasn't made for this saw and it doesn't have the depth here. So it's not going to reach here. So if you make these, uh, keep in mind you want to make it to the saw. It is specific to a saw, pretty much. So that's a mitering box or miter block. Uh, another bench aid is a type of bench hook. There's two of them here. And I show this in a video about clamping it in the tail vise. And it's just a stop block. You don't really need to clamp the piece, you just need a good block, and you need some surface area. I'm not a huge fan of the 
little dinky square planting stops. Even the ones with teeth. I, I had that. I, I tried that and it has its place but yet there's a better way and it's these kinds of blocks made thick enough to work and thin enough to work. So think about what you're going to do on the thing and you may need to float it for a block of wood if you're planting something it just has to clear and it's not metal um, I countersink the screws, they're out of the way, and there's a lot of things you can do without any clamping. You know, if I could read the grain here, I can put this on there and plane. The looseness of it, as has been said elsewhere on YouTube with old Nicholson benches, this idea of this being loose, as long as you're capable of doing the work, sometimes the loose isn't so bad because it's giving you feedback with your technique. You know, if you were getting to a point and tipping up for something, you'd, you'd find out real fast you're not planting right. So I would give credit to um, the others on YouTube that have already pointed that out. Um, there's specifically one on a Nicholson bench. So that's all these are. This is set up. It it can drop into here and go on down and be a I think it's for another spot actually but it can be a bench stop this way and that's why I don't usually yank this piece out and flip it. This can come out and actually flip over so I guess it's worth pointing out as, as a bench aid, I can drop this back in and I do have a bench stop. If I wanted to cut a tenon or some such thing, I've got it there and there might be some applications with a bigger board or something where I need something to back me up this way and I could do it. And that's why I did that and that's not uncommon. I don't like it. Uh, in practical use, I, I, it's not that I don't like it, it's just not necessarily the fastest thing. Um, I fiddle with it a lot and maybe it's the way I have it fitted. Um, who, who knows, you know. There's a right way and a wrong way and everything else. There's how it's supposed to go. Anyway, um, this is this is good though. I like the slot. I take chisels out that I'm actually working with, put them in the slot. They're protected. They don't roll off the table. So this is good. I highly recommend it. You just have to have your shit together when you go to do it. Have it straight and know what you're trying to do with it. And then, like I say, you can drop stops in there and saw or whatever. That's a type of bench hook. Or that's what it was intended in my in my intent. Um, so that takes care of standard bench stop. This is another stop I use, and it will slide anywhere in here and then clamp in the face vise. And now I could plan against this. I want to get my butt away from this vise and have more room here. It just depends on what I would be doing. I can get everything that would be here farther down the bench. It, it's multi-use. I use the crap out of this because there's nothing up here in the way. I can put it in here if I want it. I can put it here. I use this, miss one of my dog holes here, clamp it up, put the Schoberg's light duty hold fast in, they go in. Now I have a way to do something to a piece and I'm um, got the work secure. You know just a million a million things you might you might do to this. The biggest uh, thing that I do is I'm over the leg of my bench right here because the leg vise is in the leg so there is no more solid spot than right here. I can put this here, clamp it, 
and I could chop a mortise. It's usually not that tiny of a piece, but at any rate, I can I can chop a mortise. I could have this down here, open this, slide it down, clamp the piece. Like I say, very often it's a longer piece. And I can do a fair amount of chopping on this without any issues. So, um, if I wanted to be doing some kind of mortise, I could be moving along. It won't typically be a problem for me. far as this in the way. It can be, but it's normally not. So, um, your imagination is the only limit you would have as to where, where you would go and what you would do with this kind of little setup. Um, another thing I do with this I'll cut dovetails, put the pieces up here, and very often it keeps me from tearing my bench up. I'll set one or more pieces here and clean out my dovetails. I've already sawed the tails or, or pens. I go along chop and clean them out. And that way, if there's any slip or anything, I'm not blatantly tearing up my bench. Um, through mortises, I usually go from both sides, so it's usually not an issue, but sometimes you would see me put this on there. So many, so many uses for this. There's just a lot of, of good things. Uh, mortising, like I say, I do about 50% of my mortising by hand, and maybe the other 50 with a router. So that's a uh, type of bench hook. I would call this a bench protector or sacrificial face. Uh, top, bench top. Uh, another aid I use is a classic everyday bench hook. Just your everyday garden variety. This is 90, there's a rail, this is plywood, this is a modern bench hook. You can grab it and go either way. This is the correct way. I have a 90 degree cut here if I want some little some little thing that I want to put in there and cut and see and it's just cutting it off uh, what comes to mind the most is dowel rod if I was cutting some dowel rod or something or some small stock I just throw that on there I don't have to worry about cutting into the bench I don't have to fiddle with a vise anything I can put that in and it's locked it's there I could put brass rod in there and I use my hacksaw sometimes. You can go off the end, it's 90. If you want a cleaner cut in wood, you can use the little hole and just cut. And it's a very easy, safe way to do tiny little pieces. Um, that's classic plain Jane bench hook. Uh, I'll tell you what I wrote on here, bench hook for pens. If I was making ballpoint pens with the wooden shaft, a lot of times that stock, I'll buy it kind of pre-made. I put a mark here, slide it down and chop it, and then put them in, in the drill press and drill. And I have made uh, many, many, many wooden ballpoint pens. It's fun to do if, you, if you've never done that. Okay, here is a classic true classic bench hook. Um, I couldn't really do a video and be original with it because it's already shown on YouTube by uh, Roy Underhill. So I have holes on my old bench. I used to hang them on a nail. I had a long nail sticking out and I had two of them there hanging. They were hanging all the time. They are a classic design. They go what would appear to be downhill this is square to that other face, which puts it about several degrees, two degrees out of square with the face here. They can go either way. Uh, hook this way, hook 
that way, and they're pretty much made equal. And the, the reason for these, let's say I wanted to do something, only it wasn't a little dinky piece. You know, it might be four feet long. And I want to put it up here and cut it. You know, I might want to put a piece up here and spread out a little bit and cut that off. Now, I know what a lot of people are thinking, well, geez, I just go to the table saw and does that off. And, and that's fine. I won't go into that now. Um, one of my videos on my miter box and shooting board, watch that to the very end. You see I go into a big discussion about why in the world would you ever use hand tools? Why bother at all with them, ever? Well, uh, I talk about that. And there's a little bit of a rant on there about that. But uh, this is rock solid. I mean, you can cut. If you were doing tens and you already had them laid out, you had your knife walls laid out, knife lines, you can cut that way, cut down halfway. Um, there's a lot of things that if, if you want a quick flip method, kind of like when you're planning, you don't want to really fiddle with clamming and undo it. You, just, you need a way to hold it and then flip it and hold it. This, this has applications for a lot of things. Another thing that you wouldn't think of, if I wanted to chop a mortise in here, this is all solid area because the, the legs right here, but if I wanted to chop a mortise, let's say I wanted to chop a mortise right here, I can put this in the, <clears throat> in the face vise, lock it, Okay, this isn't doing anything, but watch this. Now that's gra grabbing. It's grabbing enough to do what I want to do here. Uh, usually you'd see uh, somebody hit it, and I might have over-tightened a little bit, but you don't need to over-tighten too much. That's too tight. Loosen off. That might be too loose. So you have to, you have to know what you're trying to achieve there. Is that tight? Nope. Now it's tight. There's something about this. It goes, but it doesn't, it doesn't slip once you've tightened it. So that's another method. And then the last bench aid I use all the time are winding sticks. Mark the center. They need to be true. Straight, true, and equal. And I just have two little pieces of clear poplar that I've had for a long time, and I use them for that. And they are great winding sticks. Um, so there's a few things, uh, a few ideas. Oh, one last thing I'll show you is I bought several years ago, I think they're still made, these router mats. And it appears to me that it's some kind of heavier duty, grippy surface, kind of like shelf liner. And I would say you can go to the store and buy shelf liner and probably achieve the same result. These, if they get too dusty, just rinse them in water. Let them dry out and then they'll be grippy again because they're clean. But they will get dusty. Your, your, your bench needs to not be dusty. But what they do is they grip the wood pretty good. Now, can you put it down and plane on it? No. No, it, it would move if I plane on it. But can I put it down and sand? Absolutely. Could I put it down and route? Yes, you can. Uh, that's what it was made for, and, and that works. I've done that, just so your router doesn't go too deep into the bench. But this will grip more than well enough to route, and yet you're not really clamped. You can grab it and manipulate the piece and move around. So that's a good bench aid. It's worth having, or some version of that, that works for you, like shelf liner, some carpet padding. Uh, uh, you see in another video when I tour the, sh give a little tour of this bench, I actually had a piece of carpet padding out. I use that a lot. That's not as grippy as this, so it's not as uh, great for that as this, as this router pad is, 
but it's a good padding and it's good to sand on. You press and it won't move. It's good enough and it won't move and works pretty good. So those are some ideas. Um, interested in any ideas that, that you may have. So thanks for watching.